Hi everyone, this is Scott uh, from the Vapor Team, and this is a video, and it's kind of an announcement of two different things that I'd like to, uh, I don't know, say out loud to our user base. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is next Monday, June 7th at 9 a.m., uh, we're having a Vapor tutorial that's being um, a component of the 2021 Wharf tutorial. <clears throat> It's free to register, and I'll put a register, uh, registration link down below this video. If you already are registered, um, I guess watch your email because we'll be sending some materials if you'd like to follow along with Vapor. So if you like, you can download Vapor from our website, and uh, we'll send a link out to some sample data. I plan on using uh, some wharf simulation data from Hurricane Katrina, and then some tornado data that comes from a model called CM1, which is a kind of like a wharf derivative. And so we'll be going through Vapor's uh, different renderers with those two data sets and also uh, trying to do a little bit of a deeper dive into Vapor's renderers than what we've done in the past. So yeah, that's uh, next Monday and we're trying to uh, drive up attendance. I have two of my colleagues who will be um, attending the presentation too to answer questions uh, while we go through the demo. And so um, it's kind of going to be an all hands on deck kind of thing. And um, yeah, we hope to see you there. The other thing I wanted to mention is that Vapor has uh, version 3.5 down the pipeline, and we're supposed to be doing the code freeze on June 18th. And we have a, a set of new features in 3.5 that um, I guess we'll list those features once we actually freeze our code base. But what we're trying to figure out on the Vapor team is what kind of features we should develop for Vapor 3.6, the next version after 3.5. And so we put together a user survey, and we're trying to solicit uh, feedback for the new features that we think are useful, but also features that we may not have thought of. And so we have a uh, user survey that I'll also link below the video. We're trying to close the survey on June 11th, and so uh, the more feedback we can get for our next version, the better. And if you're a Vapor user, this is kind of your chance to steer us into the direction you want to see us take. And so uh, without you guys, we wouldn't know really what our requirements are. And so this is uh, one of our first attempt at taking our, a, a real user survey and finding out um, you know, what the users think uh, in this kind of fashion. So again, the user survey is linked below as well as the link to register for the Wharf tutorial. Um, so again, if you're already registered for the tutorial, keep your eye on your email. Uh, data will be coming out soon. Uh, again, that's Katrina data, CM1 tornado data. And real quick, I'm just going to crack open Vapor, because if you haven't used it before, I'm going to do a cursory glimpse of, uh, you can see on my desktop, I've clicked on this colorful rainbow V down here for Vapor. And I have uh, the application up, but there's nothing to see yet. And <laughs> I can actually see through my visualization window, but the first thing we always do is we get data into the session. So I'll click on the file menu, go to import, click Worth ARW, and then I will navigate to my Katrina data after I assure that it's okay for Vapor to navigate uh, the file system. So uh, my Worth folder is here, and let's see, there's my Katrina data, and I'll directly import a few Worth files from Hurricane Katrina. While those load, we'll see in a second, here's our visualization window. This big black screen and this white uh, cube or slab uh, that defines the domain that we'll be looking at uh, during the tutorial on Monday. Uh, this, the, the workflow of Vapor is to first load your data, like what we just did, and then it is to create a series or a specific renderer. Uh, Vapor is comprised of these renderers that we see here. So if, if I was too fast right there, I clicked on this new button over here on the left control panel, and we get this drop down that lists all the different renderers that are supported by Vapor. Um, Vapor has wind barbs. It's kind of hard, hard to see these, but these are little arrows that point along the uh, wind vector in your simulation. We have contour plots. We have uh, flow integration, and there's two kinds of flow. There's steady flow, and unsteady flow, also known as streamlines or path lines. And the difference between the two is that uh, streamlines are time invariant. So if you're looking at one time step, you can draw a streamline that traverses your wind field and just shows you what your wind field is doing at that single time step. Whereas path lines advect what look like particles 
along a path through time. And so if you have like 500 time steps, you can essentially throw a fistful of feathers into your simulation and track where those feathers go uh, as time progresses. So I'm hoping to do a little bit more of a deep dive into the flow renderer on Monday than we've done in the past. Um, but I also want to cover all the renderers. Um, the next one on the list is the image renderer. Vapor comes bundled with um, some geo-referenced maps, and so it's very easy, like, I can do it right now. I'll double-click on my image renderer, and then we see our image renderer instance up here in this table that lists all the, all the renderers that we've made, and I can enable it by clicking that button. And since this is Hurricane Katrina, it's kind of hard to recognize, but this is uh, Louisiana, and here's New Orleans. So I'll keep on marching out the list for the sake of time. Um, again, I'll be going through all this in the tutorial. Isosurfaces are like three-dimensional contours. Uh, every point along this surface has a single value of your variable. And so if you want to look at your pressure field at 500 millibars, we can draw a surface that traces that field. And it's basically a three-dimensional contour. Um, I don't know if I'll cover the model renderer, but some people, uh, you know, have observational sensors like buoys, drop sons, or they're studying uh, wakes behind wind turbines. And so if you have a 3D model, uh, you can create a model renderer, import that geometry into the scene, and um, have kind of a structure along your visualization. The slice renderer is just a, um, a two-dimensional slice through a three-dimensional field. Um, in this image, we have a slice at the very far back end of this cube and along the bottom over here. And so if you're looking for a cross-section, uh, a slice renderer is kind of uh, the go-to for that. Uh, we have a 2D data renderer. And so WORF uh, creates variables in three dimensions, three-dimensional variables, as well as two-dimensional variables. And so uh, Vapor supports uh, 2D data as well. And so I can just show you that. If I double-click on 2D data, here's my 2D data instance below my image instance. I'll turn my image off, go down to 2D, and just turn it on. And here is our two-dimensional rendering of our variable canwatt. And um, again, I'll be, I'll be going into these more uh, finely detailed uh, controls down here at the bottom uh, on Monday. But let's keep marching down the list. The next one is the volume renderer. The volume renderer is a, is, is a I don't know, I, th I think it's incredible, uh, the imagery that it produces. It's applying color and opacity to a three-dimensional field um, and it's, it's, it's also the, one of the more tricky renderers to use because I think it takes an artistic eye and a scientific eye. There's like a cross section between those two skills to create a, an effective volume rendering that shows the observable you're, you're trying to, um, you know, you're trying to highlight in your simulation. And so, uh, of course I'll be going through the volume renderer and then there's finally the wireframe renderer, which shows us the grid that we're working with. And so I can just, it's a pretty simple one. I'll turn off my 2D renderer by clicking on the checkbox, enable the wireframe, and wow, <laughs> the mesh is so uh, is so dense that we can't uh, really see the, the, the grid, but well, <laughs> maybe that's a bad example. Um, maybe, you can, you know, maybe you can see some, some of the cells right here on the corner. But with a much more refined or a much more coarse grid, the uh, the wireframe renderer can help you see the uh, uh, what's it called the the these uh, does Worf use sigma layers the, the the layered nature of the vertical coordinate in Worf um, the terrain following grid is uh, easy to see with the wireframe renderer. You can kind of see if we, if we zoom way in on the bottom down here. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah, the, the grid cells closer to the surface are much more condensed. And then as we traverse up, they get bigger and bigger and bigger, higher up in the atmosphere. So those are, that's a brief synopsis of uh, Vapor's renderers. We're also going to be talking about um, a few other important things. Vapor has a Python engine. So if I click on Tools and I go to Python Variables, this allows us to create new variables using Python. And so um, if if, if our WORF simulation, if I close out of this and I go to our, well, if I look at our variables that are available, we have U, V, and W. And we can use U, V, and W 
in the Python engine to derive uh, wind speed or uh, curl or vorticity, whichever you want to call it. And um, so I'll be stepping through some of the supported uh, bundled features that Vapor uh, comes with, uh, with the Python engine. So you don't necessarily have to save those variables to disk. You can derive them later on and even modify them um, to suit your needs. So we'll be covering the Python engine. And uh, the last thing I wanted to cover is for, for some users, they aren't necessarily using uh, WARF data all the time. And so the data the formats that Vapor natively supports are WARF ARW, uh, MPAS, and the NetCDF CF compliant data. And so one of the things um, that I'll be talking about is how to take generic NetCDF data and make it CF compliant so that Vapor can read it. CF compliant data uh, basically just is uh, that CDF data that has a few attributes um, applied to it. It's, it's pretty easy to get your data CF compliant. And, and the whole motivation for CF compliance is that it's, it's easy to explain or describe uh, many forms of data uh, in net CDF. Um, and there's not really a lot of uh, rules for um, how, how it's really described. So, so Vapor needs kind of a description of how the grid is set up and that's why we try to follow the CF conventions. And so I think I'll, I'll try to be using a Python example for NetCDF uh, CF compliance, but I might also uh, do an example using a tool called CDO. So um, I think that is the gist of what I'm gonna cover. But if you'd like to have me cover something outside of the scope that I've talked about, I'll also put a link to our Discord forum below, and you can uh, comment there. Um, and again, if you have five minutes of time and you can fill out the uh, Vapor user survey, we, we really need uh, this kind of feedback, and so that'd be hugely appreciated. So um, hopefully I can see everyone on Monday, and again, the link to registration for the Warp tutorial will be put below. And uh, yeah, I look forward to it. All right.